Today my topic is Peciola hepatica. Peciola hepatica. Peciola hepatica. This is an endoparasite. This is an important endoparasite and uh, this belongs to phylum. Phylum Platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes and also known as helmin parasite. And it under the class Trematoda. And under the family, sorry, under Family Pesiolidi and Genus is Pesiola. This species is Hepatica. So, this Pesiola Hepatica is also commonly known as the liver flower. Why this is called liver flower? Because the other stages of this parasite are present in the liver of certain mammals such as goat, buffaloes, cow, including human beings. So that this name implies because of the presence of this parasite in the liver of their definitive host. In this parasite, there are two types of the host. One is the definitive host. The another is the intermediate host. Then, what do you mean by Definitive hosts and the intermediate hosts. The definitive hosts are those hosts where the other states of the parasite are present. For example, for this parasite, the definitive hosts are the certain mammals. For example, buffaloes, cow, sheep, goat, as well as human beings. And the intermediate hosts are those hosts where the larval form of these parasites are present. In order to, in, to complete their life cycle, this parasite, that is Pesciola hepatica, need two types of the hosts. One is the definitive host, as I have already mentioned you, and the other intermediate host is the fresh water, fresh water snail which is the intermediate host for this helmin parasite. So, this is all about the systematic position of this helmin parasite. This helmin parasite are usually leaf-like structure. Then, what about their structure? The structure of Fasciola hepatica. They are the lip-like structure that means their body is dorsoventrally flattened. That is, an animal having dorsal and the ventral side. But in this case, in this case, in this parasite, their body are dorsoventrally flattened just like a leaf. So, we discuss about the structure of this parasite. This is the structure. Let me put it on this wall. This is the structure of Fasciola hepatica. Let me draw here. They have cone shapes. 
structure. Nucleotide concept structure and having two sucker. This is the oral sucker and the another is the ventral sucker. Ventral sucker is also known as the acetabulum. Acetabulum. And this portion is the head and this portion is the mouth and this is the oral sucker. Oral sucker is present at the anterior end of the body and this is the genital opening. Genital opening in the figure and this is the body and this is the anal opening. Anal opening figure the structure of fasciola hepatica. Oh. Then this is the this helmet parasite is the largest flock of the world. This is the largest flock of the world. So what about their body length? It having a length of 30 millimeter 30 millimeter in length and having diameter of 13 millimeter 13 13 millimeter in diameter and the body is cone set structure the subventral flatten having two sucker one is the oral sucker and the, the another is the dorsal sucker or acetabulum having mouth genital opening and anal opening and this is the most largest helmet parasite of the world and this oral sucker are more uh, are more adapted in order to attach their body in their host body cells okay this is the structure of hepatiola hepatica then next is the life cycle which is the most important part life cycle of pensiola hepatica which is commonly known as the liver plug. These liver plug are present in the biliary passes of their definitive host that is human being or cattle, goat sheep that is certain mammals. So they are present in the for example I do this diagram in case of the sheep okay. So the adult worm are present either in liver of sheep this is the other one which are present inside the body of a sheep and after that their egg are passes along with the faces of the along with faces of definitive host come this is the their egg come these are the eggs of the fasciola hepatica. These are the eggs. So, under favorable condition, under favorable condition, these eggs are developed into the miracidium larva. These eggs are developed into miracidium larva. Miracidium larva which are present in the fresh water which are present in the fresh water and 
This mirror stadium larva must should enter inside the body of their intermediate host, that is freshwater snail. When, unfortunately, if this larva can't get their internal intermediate host, then their life cycle can't complete. Okay, so this mirasidium larva enter inside the body of freshwater snail. Come, I will draw about the freshwater snail. This is the freshwater snail. This is the snail. Then, this Mirasidium larva enter inside the body of the freshwater snail. Inside the body, this Mirasidium larva develops into the sporosis. Sporosis. Then, after the development of the sporosis, it develops another stage which is known as the radia, data radia. Data radia. Then this data radia develop into the sarcaria, which have been. Oh, you do one diagram, then see in that WhatsApp images. Okay. Then this is the sarcaria larva, and up to this, it is present inside the body of the snail cup. Then this sarcaria larva then uh, uh, from, sorry from the snail and uh, it then this sarcaria larva then present in the different vegetation different vegetation and uh, this sarcaria larva are ancestor is metasarcaria they are ancestor is metasarcaria in the Visitation fan or in the contaminated water. This metasarcaria can be present in the vegetation or in the muddy water or contaminated water, or in some extent it may be present in the oven sweets, etc. Okay, so then. This metasarcaria are present in this contaminated vegetable as well as contaminated water. Men get infected or certain mammals get infected when this metasarcaria are insisted by the human being or the domesticated mammal that is sheep, cow, goat, buffaloes, etc. So after eating this metasarcaria, they are usually ingested by the definitive host and the passes directly from the ingestion to the mouth and the dairy to the in, uh, to the stomach. Then this metasarcaria develop into the develop into young stages of this pecula hepatica. Young state that is not other states. Young facella hepatica are usually developed and they penetrate the wall of the small intestine and through the pericardial, uh, through pericardial, uh, then uh, through blood circulation, there is to the liver. Where in the liver, this parasite is usually developed into other stages. So, in order to develop this life cycle, the whole duration in case of the to this is inside the body of the seed and this inside the body of the snail cup. And whole life cycle takes place about two to three months. The whole life cycle is takes about two to three months. So I repeat again, this parasite, these helmin parasites are present in the liver of their definitive host. Then the they are present in the liver of their definitive host and their egg are passes along with the faces of their definitive host. 
they are present along with the faces of the definitive force and the, this acts under favorable condition when moisture is some high then this develop into the larval stages known as the Miracidium larva. These Miracidium larva are freshwater larva and they source their intermediate host that are the freshwater snail. Then this Miracidium larva within 48 hours should enter inside the body of a freshwater snail. If they can't get their intermediate host, then they cannot complete their life cycle. So, they get their intermediate host, enter inside the body of the snail. Inside the body of the snail, after three days, this Miracidium larva develop into sporosis larva. Then, inside the body of the snail, again, after three to five days, this sporosis larva again develop into certain daughter radia. Then after that, this radia develop into the circaria larva which having a tail. In this life cycle of Fasciola hepatica, we find different form of larval stages. This is the first or only Hermin parasite who is having so many larval stages there are one two three four five larval stages are present in order to complete their life cycle there are the miracidium sporosis radia circaria and metacircaria so inside the body of the snail it develops into sporosis radia and the circaria then after development of the circaria this larva leave the body of the snail and they again usually migrate out from the body of the snail and they develop in the vegetation or in the contaminated water is metacircaria. Men or, uh, uh, or men or domesticated mammals get infected by resting this type of the vegetation or contaminated vegetation or polluted water who is having metacircaria and then again this metacircaria enter inside the body of their definitive host and that there is the stomach then through the stomach through the blood circulation there is to the liver and in the liver the adult stage usually develop so this is all about the life cycle of Fasciola hepatica then what about their disease? That means pathogenicity. Pathogenicity means the disease caused by these parasites. Pathogenicity means the disease caused by the parasite which is known as the Pesioliasis. The disease caused by this parasite is known as the Pesioliasis. So, in Pesioliasis, they are having different states depending upon the type of the parasite that is when this parasite enter inside the body then different stages are usually present one is the most initial stage or in initial incubation phase initial incubation Phase where there is no symptom or slightly symptom due to the incubation first stage of this disease. There is pain in stomach. Then after some time the disease 
is usually which is known as the acute phase. Acute phase. In this acute phase, there may be fever and abdominal pain abdominal pain jaundice jaundice and anemia anemia and respiratory discomfort respiratory discomfort this is the acute phase called then the next or the most fatal phase is the chronic state chronic state in this stage there is the inflammation of the bladder inflammation of the bile and formation of the gallstone or to some extent to some extent formation of the inflammation of the liver which can be leading to cancer God, this is the sign symptom of this disease that is fasciolysis so this is an important and most commonly present helmet parasite so this is all about their disease that is pathogenicity then what about their treatment there are different treatment treatment in case of the human being and the treatment in case of the animals because these parasites are present both in animal as well as human being. We human being are also mammals, so we have this disease called. So we have different treatment for different animals. That is, one treatment with human being, another with animals. So first of all, we see about the drugs which are mainly prescribed for by the doctor for in case of the human for human but one tycla bendazole tycla bendazole is the tablet which is given when this parasitic disease are present in human being. The another tablet is the praziquintel. Praziquintel. These two tablets are usually prescribed when human get infected by this parasite. Then in case of the animals, for animals, other the tablet other chlorosulon chlorosulon number two albendazole albendazole number three nitobinin nitobinin Number four, Closun, Closun Tel, Closun Tel. Number five, 
treatment of this pestilences both in human being as well as in animals then what about their preventive measures how we prevent from this hermine parasite that means preventive measure this is the most important part preventive measure Always remember the term that is prevention is better than cure. So, preventive measure is very important. Preventive measure number one is strict control of the growth and sale of watercress. Strict control of the growth and sell of watercress, other edible water plants and other edible water plant. If you want to eat water plant, then wash thoroughly and cook properly. Cook. Then Number two, individual can protect themselves. Individuals can protect themselves. Can protect themselves by not eating raw watercress. By not eating raw watercress and number 30 traveler to area with poor sanitation traveler to area with poor sanitation poor sanitation should avoid food and the water. Should avoid food and the water that might be contaminated. They might be contaminated and the last point, number four. So, point number four, the preventive measure. Vegetable grown in field might have been irrigated with polluted water. So, it should be thoroughly cooked. These four points are the preventive measure. This is all about the structure, life cycle, treatment and preventive measure for this helmin parasite okay that's all